Hey everybody, I'm Todd Anderson. And I'm Ross Merriam. You're watching Versus Live by StarCityGames.com. We got Nick Miller over in the sideboard. Hello. How's it going, Nick? Great. Another cool. day, another Versus Live. We got Modern on the docket, right? Oh yeah, we got Modern today. We are going to be, uh, you know, I don't want to say testing because you don't really test Modern. You you pick a deck that you like and uh, and you and you, you go play a tournament because no one is going to play against you when you're playing Dredge. No one is going to play against you when you're playing Parklane Ironworks. No one wants to play against these decks until you get to the tournament. Then everything's great. Everyone loves playing in modern tournaments. I don't, yeah. I don't understand why. Oh, they they like the the diversity of the format. The fact that they get to play against a wide variety of different decks. We are playing somewhat similar decks today in that that there's a bit of theme going on. We're doing a <laughs> we're doing a battle between two of the pillars of the format at this yes. point. Uh, we know that the the blue card selection spells like Ponder and Preordain were deemed too good. Early on, they were enabling some uh, incredibly degenerate combo decks, and they were banned pretty quickly into the format's history. But non-blue colors seem to uh, not run into that problem. They're, yeah, it's, they're it's, what, what, it's weird, right, that you know, Ponder and Preordain, these cards are just too good for the format. Blue combo decks are too good for the format. You know what? If you just take a look at Modern, you get to see a lot of green combo decks. You get to see a lot of green big mana decks, and they get a what's this? What's this one mana card? Is it ancient ancient stirrings? Could you imagine if Ponder looked at the top five cards? Yeah, <laughs> Ponder looks at the top five. Impulse costs two, and then looks at the top four. That's cabbage. To be fair, <laughs> you got to play a lot of colorless cards to make your stirrings deck work. Oh no, like lands. Thing yeah. is, in modern, <laughs> there are plenty of decks that get to do that. For, for oh, the yeah. longest time, it was really just Tron, and in the last. Two years, we've seen a ton of different stirring stacks emerge. Lantern was probably the next one. Uh, we've seen Ironworks now. The You're now playing Hard and Scales Affinity in our first matchup. So a lot of different stirring stacks, a lot of different ways to utilize this card because there's such a high density of quality colorless cards to go along with just finding lands. And oh, I, I agree. For and sure. I, I do think it's important that your canter finds lands. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I you know, I think that mana is the backbone of modern. In in one yeah. way or another, either you're being degenerate by trying to generate a lot of it really quickly or you're just trying to uh play spells that make your draw more consistent over time. And Ancient Stirrings is perfect because you can use it to find the powerful lands that generate excess mana. You can use it to find the uh, powerful colo spells that your deck revolves around. And so at any given time, Ancient Stirrings is the best card in your deck because it finds whatever you need at any given moment. Yeah, it's the dichotomy of being able to find the lane you need in the early game and the spell you need in the late game. And that's the what makes a cantrip do uh, or a similar kind of spell effective in that it that's what makes it really add consistency you need it to be good at, at both stages and that the blue cantrips find any card so they're always effective uh and that's why they've been so popular but stirrings fits that mold based on how it's worded faithless looting does uh similar like if, if you're flooded you can turn lands into spells if you're uh light on lands you can turn spells into lands so it's ends up being card disadvantage but as long as you utilize the graveyard a little bit as we found not just in the most degenerate ways you can use it in some fair shells too mardu pyromancer being uh, a very common one you can call hollow one a, a fairer deck mm, eh. what what there's nothing fair what about that deck. there's definitely fair what things about say, that Ross look at what the rest it's, of the format is doing it's like a game plan is not to play fair magic. Yeah. The, the turn one hollow one is the non-fair part of the deck. I mean, Which is what it's designed to do. Yeah, okay, so if you... If that's the not fair portion of the deck, what's the un... I mean, I don't get it. What's the fair portion? Because if, I, if the deck just doesn't do... It either plays a hollow one on the first two turns or it does nothing. It's fair <laughs> game plan is casting three mana burning phoenix. Eight free and yeah. accidentally discards all of one. You like flame blade add up on one and then you attack them with mm. that thing for a bit while you're filling your graveyard and looting a bunch. Then you bring back all the recursive <sighs> threats and cast a, a Del threat. I too can read all the cards in hollow one. <laughs> that, that's a legitimate plan. They win plenty of games without hollow one. Those are my favorite magic arguments when you say something and then the person just reads you the text of the card you're talking about. Oh, yeah. I did, oh, that, right. I did that on stream uh, yesterday. Someone's like, why is Thrashing Brawn on in your Golgari deck? I'm just like, let's take a look, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, three, one GG. Okay, it's a pretty good start. It's pretty cheap. Three, four. All right. I'm getting somewhere. Spend one mana, sacrifice it, destroy tower factors. There it is. That's why it's in the deck. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so today we are going to be battling uh, three different Ancient Stirrings decks versus 
three different Faithless Looting decks, uh, not only uh, to see which ones are the most powerful, but also because these are some of the matchups, if you choose to play these decks, that you're going to run into. And uh, while it may seem like we are gold fishing, which for the most part, we are, uh, that is kind of the the weird spot we find ourselves in right now with Modern. Uh, if you look at the last Grand Prix Top 8, uh, there were, I believe, four... I stirrings know, decks, four stirrings two decks, looting. Two looting decks, and then uh, a, a one cavern, and then advanced an uh, infect. And advanced infect. difference and infect. Okay, yep. so we had two Noble Hierarch decks, two Faithless Looting decks, and four Ancient Stirrings decks. And I think that that is not exactly indicative of the format as a whole, but it is a, a microcosm of where the format is right now. It's like yeah. a snapshot of where we're at right this moment. Yeah, I think Noble Hierarch, Faithful Suiting, and Ancient Stirrings are three of the pillars of the format. Uh, the Noble Hierarch decks are these disruptive aggro decks that tend to be good against the uh, the combo decks and the linear decks of the format. Stirrings and Faithful Suiting have proven to be two of the best enablers for, for linear decks and the most widespread enablers. They, they go into so many different archetypes or enable so many different archetypes. So they become very popular. And then we have some control decks lying around. Azorius yeah. Control, sometimes Jeskai. And and that really is the the main collection that comprises the modern metagame. Hey, Ross, yeah. would you mind adjusting your mic a little bit? I think uh, we're getting a little breathing in there. Oh, you know. Look, just uh, I can't think of a good pun on, on Ross Merriam that involves heavy breathing, but I'm sure chat will. Look, we all have to live. <laughs> we have to breathe to um, live here. So, I mean, the, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say that the, the modern format is just this, right? This is not exactly what modern is. This is what modern is at this moment. And uh, at some point, I think that Death Shadow could come back to kind of slay <clears throat> all of these uh, decks that are not hyper aggressive. Like the Angel Stirring decks that are trying to go big, like uh, Amulet or Tron. Um, are, are natural prey for Death Shadow. Uh, the decks that are playing Faithless Looting that are not putting a lot of actual creatures onto the battlefield um, quickly, I think, are natural prey for Death Shadow as well. And Dredge even, if they're playing a Team or Battle Rage version, I think Death Shadow is very good against those if, 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 um, if you draw Team or Battle Rage at the right time, obviously. But you have a lot of filtering for it, you know, cycling Street Race and Mistress Bobbles and things like that. So you can find it pretty quick. Um... But yeah, I, I don't know. Other than that, like we have control running around. Yeah, but these are very s significant portions of the metagame. These are matchups that you need to know. And while it's often phrased that they're just two ships passing in the night, there is a lot, there is interaction here mm -hmm. where in how you sequence so that you can prepare for their broken draws. There's a lot of emphasis placed on mulligan decisions that you don't fall behind. Yes. So there, there's still a lot of decisions to be made here. I think uh, in this matchup that we're playing in particular, we mentioned Todd is playing Hardened Scales. I am playing Dredge. So it's Dredge Here. Day, I think. It's, I think I'll just no. play Dredge for all three matches. Yeah. I mean, honestly, if you want to, I think the <laughs> chat would be more than happy with that. But uh... but uh, So I'll, I'll be looking to conflagrate uh, some of the early creatures from Todd so that I can limit his battlefield so he doesn't go ham with an Arcbound Ravager. Or even uh, just steal Overseer. Yeah, right? or steal Overseer. Mm -hmm. So the, those are things. I bring in a lot of interaction after Cyborg because most of my answers to hate cards are naturalized effects that yes. can do, uh, are just na typically good against you. The Tormod's Crypts and, and Grafter's Cages in your sideboard are obviously going to play a huge role. I like Tormod's Crypt a lot out of this deck, specifically because, one, it's a Mox Opal deck, that, so the zero drop helps enable it. And yeah. two, it's a Mox Opal deck that struggles often to enable Mox Opal on the, the earliest turns. Yeah, I, I've, the the couple tournaments that I actually played the, uh, the Hardened Scales deck in, in Modern, I struggled to turn on Mox Opal quite a bit, especially on turn two. Um, if you don't draw a Dark Soul Citadel, it's actually quite difficult for this deck to turn on Moxable on turn 2 to play anything relevant or to even cast uh, an additional 1-mana spell. A lot of times you can go play a 1-mana spell, and then on turn 2 you play your second land, play your Arcbound Ravager or Steel Overseer, and you have the Moxable, and it's technically turned on, but you already, you've already played your 1-drop artifact creature or whatever. You've already played your 1-drop, and now your hand is just all 2s because your deck is full of uh, Overseer, Ravager, uh uh, wild Gro or not wild Gro walker oh, God, I got that in the brain uh, hanger back <laughs> walker and walking ballista you just have a ton of twos in your deck yeah so, so, the, so the zeros really do help a lot there and a lot of the time torment script is just going to sit and play for a turn or two while I try to figure out how to navigate around it mm. uh, and this might be a matchup where I have to play into it a little bit more because it enabling mox opal is so strong 
Yeah, I mean, I also just think that whenever it's like peeling the Band-Aid off, right? Like, you need to make me pop it, because if I don't hit your graveyard, then that means your graveyard is not doing anything that I care about. Yeah. And so a lot of times you just need to do it and try to have, like, still have, like, a Faithless Looting or a Cathartic Reunion in hand, so that the turn after I pop it, you get to reset and go go again. But, but yeah, that's, that's the match we're playing today. Uh, Hard Scale Affinity versus Dredge. Nick? We got any questions over there? Well, as you guys were discussing the cantrips of the format, uh, Xander the Great asked, how would modern look if Pyridane was legal? Honestly, there might be a sweet Delver deck. Um, I mean, there's our, we already have Opt and Serum Vision as a sleight of hand. It's not like Storm getting a Ponder of Pyridane is going to change it that much. Personally, I don't think so. I've talked about this a lot. I've thought about this a lot. Do not look at me like that, Ross Merriam. <laughs> You know what makes you know what makes decks like Storm busted? It's not the ponders and the preordains. It's the right of flames. It's the seething songs. It's the mana effects. Because if you have enough mana effects, you only need the one big thing to do. You only need the one dragon storm. You only need the one gift sun given. And then you just win the game on the spot. The cards like ponder and preordain help you find those more quickly, but you still need something else. You still need the mana generation. You still need the brawl. The Goblin Electromancer. You need it to survive. Yeah, they have those things. And now you just want to give them a preordain. Oh no, not Storm getting another cantrip. I'm literally dying on turn three to Dredge and you think I give a crap about <laughs> Storm getting another Ponder? Preordain is really good. Yeah, I would like to have that in like Shadow and, you know, other, yeah, other I don't decks. think anyone I'll... quite understands the difference between Preordain and Serum Visions. It's a lot. Oh, Anyone that's played Vintage knows the difference. Uh, yeah. Preordain's the one card you get to play a lot of. Uh, okay, uh, let me let me. I don't want to go on too deep of a rant on this. I I have thought about this a lot. Uh, I wish I could curse right now because it is some absolute bull hockey <laughs> that you get to play Age of Strange in this format, and I can't play Preordain. I just want to say that I would love to play Preordain in a fair deck, and yeah, oh the 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 you know some degenerate combo decks could make good use of of Preordain. Sure. You know what else could make good use of Preordain? A Delver deck. A Death Shadow deck. Something that preys on these really fast combo decks. But they just don't have that consistency because you took away their cantrips and you gave it to Red and Green! It's blocky! I, I think the argument that Ancient Stirrings and Faithless Sitting are on par with Ponder Preordain has merit. So that... Thank you. Hashtag Thank you. Either hockey. ban them all or ban none of them. Please. That's all I want is consistency. Okay. Even if you just give us one. I don't you don't even need both. Just give me one of you know, them. You know what cards give you consistency? Ancient strength and faithless students. <laughs> I'll take odds. Always. <laughs> All right. I guess I gotta go first again. I think we've rolled even every time. Oh yeah. Yeah, Todd, you gotta get There's a bull hockey numbers. emote for your for your stream. <laughs> a bull hockey emote, yeah. <laughs> There's more. No, I'm allowed to curse numbers. on my stream. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, this hand is pretty good defensively in this matchup, so I, I do like the look of it. Um, it is not super aggressive, though, so we could just get burned out by Ross, but we're going to keep. Well, don't think I would ever mulligan a hand that has these five cards in it, so let's go. Okay, cool. I'll start off with hard skills. Your turn. That's pretty good. I might be dead. No, I just, I literally just, you can you can hear me when I talk, right? Nope. <laughs> I, My... <laughs> <laughs> I, I've learned to tune you out. Would you say you're tipping the scales in your favor this game? You have no play on turn one, so you must have Cathartic Reunion. All right, I'm going to play a 2-2 Hangback Walker. And you know what? I'm going to play a Jar. I'm just going to play a Long Jar. Okay, not the best set of draws here, but our hand started pretty well, so let's Cathartic Reunion discarding two Stink Oh, uh, what are you talking about? That's like one of the best starts you could possibly have. Yeah, I well, I was talking about the two draw steps I took after my opening hand. Mm -hmm. These were all in my opening hand. Okay. But you said your starting hand wasn't exactly ideal. But you literally had two stink No, I said my draws hand. weren't ideal. Mm -hmm. I heard draw. It's a lot of conflagrates. Wow, three conflagrates in a row? You sure you're not stacking your deck over there, Ross? Dude, I don't even want three conflagrates <laughs> in a row. <laughs> Maybe when you were goldfishing, you just flash back three Coffle Graves for no reason. <laughs> huh. That doesn't seem very good okay. at all. Well, we didn't really hit anything to do, so I'll pass the turn. Well, you got some Coffle Graves and a Loam. Could just get me. 
All right. Thing is, Conflagrate not so good against Hanger Backwalker Welding Jar. Play an animation module. I'm going to read this one. Whenever a counter gets placed on a a, a plus one plus one counter gets placed on a creature, I can spend one and make a one one servo, and then I can spend three, tap it, and I get to uh, proliferate a, a a permanent. So I can make a one one. I'm going to do this. Pay one, make a servo. Mm, your turn. I could have just cast another Hangback Walker, I guess. Maybe that was better. Actually, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to redo my whole turn. <laughs> I'm going to play this and pump this. No, okay. this, this is okay. still happening. Yeah, so the animation module is in your hand? Yes, sorry. I just really wanted to get animation module going, but that is worse than just having big Hangback Walkers, okay. I think. Um. So, card I am worried about is Arcbound Ravager. Oh, yeah, you're dead if I draw it. Well, that, yeah, that means I need a, to find an Archimiba. I guess we can just start this turn pretty easily by dredging this imp. I feel like if you have a land in hand, you're going to be pretty good because you have Faith the Salutings and the Graveyard. I feel like you could just find an Archimiba quite easily. Well, I have no dredges in my graveyard right now, so that's a problem. Ah, classic. Um, I could just cathartic reading in all my stuff. Just hit these for six. See what happens. <laughs> how do I play this turn? It's a question of how I play my conflagrates right now. If I go after this hangerback walker on two, does Todd regenerate? Probably. So is it best for me to just try to ignore the hangerback walkers and go straight to Todd's face? I don't know. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough question. I can say that. Um, I am th hmm. so right now Todd has 6 power on the battlefield I'm still at 20 I don't really block well which is a problem but Todd does have to defend against me I'm going to create a good amount of power this turn right, 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 right. Um, I think I just send it upstairs and get some dredgers into the graveyard so yeah I'm going to conflagrate Todd for 4 I'm at 16 and play a copper line gorge, mm -hmm. return two blood gas that triggers the prized amalgam. Go to my end step and pass the turn, and we'll we'll look to faithless looting this next turn. All right. Now I'll play animation module. Yep, and I guess playing Artbound Worker doesn't really change much. I can just pump both of these and make one with the animation module. Hmm. Alright, go. I'll just play okay. defense. Okay. I could just smash them for six, but the the longer I get my hanger back pumped up, you know, the better. Okay, so finally hit an Archimiba. Nice. That I will take. I haven't hit a creeping chill yet. Uh, so here, I'm going to attack first. That way I can try to return the uh, creatures that die in combat. So attack for seven. Mm. Okay, uh, block these two, and I'll pump both and make one one. You said these two? Okay. Yep. So you take two. Yep, uh, 14. Second mate. Flashback Faithless Looting. Best card in the deck. Whew. I just, I just love casting Faithless Looting. Oh, we know. Dredge 5. You can see it on your face. I, I don't see Ross actually smile very much. He's usually a pretty angry individual. <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, I prefer serious. I, I prefer morose. Ooh, that's a good word. Okay, so that's two dredge fives. We resolve the faithful seating first, discard two stinky dimps, and got a creeping chill. I right, go to 11, you're at 23. That's correct. Then I can play this land tapped, return two blood gas, trigger two amalgams, go to my end step once again, and pass the turn. Okay. 
So now I have the Narc Amoeba up for Ink Moth Nexus. Uh, I'm at a healthy life total still, and I think my plan in this game is going to be to just try to burn Todd out. Like I've got three Creeping Chills up to my deck, and Todd's at 11. 3, 6, 9, 12, 12. I've got 18 cards left in my deck. I have no idea what's happening right now. All right, I cycled this, played an Opal, played Worker, paid one to make a servo. Okay. So we're looking at six blockers on Todd's side, which is convenient because I have six attack, attackers. Attack for 10? Is that good? Mm, attack for six? Is that good? I don't know. <laughs> Nobody knows. Yeah, I'll just say good. But it's provocative. <laughs> <laughs> Gets the people going. Oh, wow, so hot. So you're empty-handed, and you're not really doing much of anything, so I think no. I can start playing some defense. Yeah. I'll start with a Dredge of an Imp, and now we're Ooh. hitting some Creeping Chills. Ooh, that's two that's chi a lot. Two Chills and an Arc Amoeba. I'm at five, you're at 29. Yeah, so you're dead. Oh, yeah, you have Common Grave for five. Well, I've, a... I've left some Alums in my hand, too. I only have four, but I have a, sure. I have a Loam here. So we'll just Loam back any, th any three lands. Copper Line Gorge, Jumpstorm. Are you sure you have three lands in the graveyard? <laughs> 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 and we can just Conflagrate. Yeah, if if I don't have the uh, the like Ravager or Overseer draw, just pumping these even with the Hardened Scales is not enough. Like I could have started attacking like last turn, right? I could attack for six last turn, right? Yeah. But you would just be at twenty three right now. <laughs> it's not enough. It's not even close to enough. Um, you know, I really need one of my big explosive creatures like Overseer or Ravager to really combo with Hardened Scales to get things done. But we did yeah. not do that. The, the Hangerback Walkers are good against some of the more interactive decks. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to kill them. I'm like the I thought that might be pretty good against you there, just because you were gonna pump out creatures and you weren't really doing a lot, and then you revealed three Conflagrates, and I thought, well, now I'm just gonna lose burn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, it, uh, that's another aspect of the deck that that Creeping Chill has aided, where that your your opponent can sit there and try to play defense, and b before creeping chill, it would be really hard to just kill you through three conflagrates. Yeah, if you literally just play defense the entire game and never let them attack. Mm -hmm. uh, now with four creeping chills, they're just at eight, and conflagrating them for eight damage is very easy. <laughs> That's true. All right, Nick, we got any questions over there? <clears throat> yeah, uh, along with the preordained talk, a lot of people were speculating with the new master set box art appearing to be a dig through time. Faux reprint or <clears throat> new art. What about Dig Through Time and Modern? And I, I will lead off by saying <laughs> you cannot do that. <laughs> so I, Jeff Hoogland actually tweeted uh, a few months back. He was just like, I think it's time to unban Dig Through Time. Nope. And um, I honestly, I just stopped what I was doing. <laughs> and I just sat there for a second. I tried to actually just think of the world where Dig Through Time was unbanned. And I was just like, well, do you not remember like when it was legal. Because like, not a lot has really changed since then. Like Most of the cards are still there. And also, it literally was banned like a few years ago. It's not It's not like something like uh, Bitter Blossom, which was banned before the format was like developed or whatever, like or even thought of. It was like, yeah, we just banned this. This was in Standard recently, and it was gross. And also, we just banned this. To, to be fair, <laughs> Dig Through Time never existed in Modern without Treasure Cruise. So great. Did but, you see Legacy yeah, where it yeah. did? Exactly. That was my next point. Like we we're if you just ban the one, people just move on to dig. And yes, they they do differ a little bit. Dig is a little bit better in some more reactive decks. I think modern one this year in modern has been the best year for control decks since Splinter Twin was banned. I agree. Teferi is big game. Yes. You know what you can cast with two Unbanded, untapped well, lands from Teferi. Yeah. <laughs> Un through time. Unbanning Jason Mind Sculptor, printing to fairy, giving these control decks this really good top end that helps them like grind out the fair decks while also giving them like pretty solid win conditions that kind of steamroll and take over the game yeah. if you if left unchecked. Yeah, absolutely agree. As, as egregious as I think Teferi is, just from a design standpoint, it was good for modern in making elevating control decks. So mm -hmm. well, and that's what ever all the arguments for unbanning things like Dig Through Time are to help reactive blue decks. They've been good this year. Yeah. So like, why, do they really need that much help? Like, degenerate decks are, aren't going anywhere. They're not going to stop existing in modern. Yeah, you could ban probably five cards yeah. and like someone will just find a different way to abuse some other card. Yeah. You know? the, the format's too big. There's too many powerful enablers. Like, there, there's always going to be a, a wide swath of um, of degenerate linear decks. That's what modern. That's just what modern is. It's like trying to talk about legacy without brainstorming fetchlands. Like that. That's just the 
things that define the format and make oh, it what it is. Things that should be banned. Yeah. Uh, so trying to like ban all of them is, is sort of a fool's errand, which is why I don't mind that ancient stirrings and faithless suiting are around. But unbanning dig through time, like I don't want to live in a modern format where the blue control decks have like preordained dig through time to fairy <laughs> like just get snapcaster mage. I mean, th then they would all just be mentor decks, and then it yeah. would just be you know okay now my my teferi costs three now you know is that <laughs> that's is that really what you want so all right um, uh, let's see one more question I, I don't think we need to spend more time on dig through time yeah it's good we're they, good. uh hastis wants to know what are hardened scales good matchups uh it's good against humans um, the the deck initially emerged because it's good against humans that is true um i honestly it's it's a little bit slower than your traditional affinity decks as far as um average win speed like i think uh, if you left normal affinity to to its devices or whatever and didn't interact with it all didn't put up a blocker just playing the goldfish game i think on average affinity's going to kill you on turn four like most of the time yeah this deck uh is roughly the same but it's a little more vulnerable to um uh I guess like disenchant effects, like things that specifically kill nature's claim, shrink your clock by a lot. If you draw, if you don't draw hardened scales, um, like your deck just doesn't function this, like even close to the same as, as it does otherwise. Yeah. Like it's just not, it, it becomes like a weird, bad standard deck or like a good standard deck. It, it's definitely more polarized than regular affinity. Like your, your medium draws are worse than medium than affinity's medium draws, but your best draws are way better than what, regular if oh yeah does. i mean i killed i killed the the pgq where i played the deck uh i i killed people on turn three quite a bit through disruption just by going like turn one two like uh hardened scales turn two i would play mox opal uh like hanger back hanger back no i would use it was either ballista or ravager with an ink moth nexus yeah like, those were the two starts where you could kill your opponent on three pretty easily now turn three you get access to like four mana you get to hanger back walker for a bunch you get to you know just do really disgusting stuff so i don't know yeah affinity master peter uh, tubergen from the scg tour said that he likes the deck but it is a little more cold to things like stony silence because whereas normal affinity has um yeah you have your aggro unblockable or as champion, as champion, champion and your and single like, pass draw sometimes yeah, kind of just stuff. beat them down yeah with a backed up by a gal blaster all right well we are going to take a short three minute break make sure to get some more questions into uh nick miller uh over here in the sideboard just at scg tour in the twitch chat with your question he'll be picking the best ones uh to ask us we are going to take a short three minute break while we figure out sideboarding for hard scales affinity versus dredge all right, we're here for sideboarding, and from my side, it's it's fairly easy. In this matchup, uh, we want our anti-graveyard cards. That means Graph Digger's Cage. That means Tormod's Crypt. Luckily, these are ones we can actually find off of uh, Ancient Strengths, which is pretty great. The rest of the sideboard is a little polarized. You know, we have Damning Sphere to help out against things like uh, Ironworks as well as Storm. We have Dismembers, which come in against a number of creature-based matchups. Uh, I don't even know what else is over there. You got some Spell Skites, spell which I think are interesting in this yeah, matchup. Yeah, I, I thought that those, those might be good, but I was like digging through my deck. I already have three Welding Jars and I don't really know what else to cut. So, I mean, I don't like cutting the enablers. Like, these help turn on Mox Opal. They're really good with Arcbound Ravager, but they're not good otherwise. Hangback Walker is a potential, but it's also very good with Arcbound Ravager. And we draw two, drew two last game, so I'm not sure. Maybe we could just, like, cut this. Again, yeah, yeah, your enabler. I, I, think you could, I think you could cut a Hangback Walker and a Bobble for the Spell Skites. All right, we'll, you're bringing we'll in two that. zeros with the Crypts, so you're going to be up a zero anyway. All right, we'll try that. I, um, I just like protecting cage is obviously great. Um, yeah, you're right. You're right. And also pr like protecting ink moth when you go all in on it. I'm I'm pretty scared of this card. It's also um, it's not great against conflagrate. Like if I target if I conflagrate and use well, one on the spell sky, yeah, just one on spell sky, it, it then, can't redirect it, any of the other. Right. Um, yeah. So we're gonna be cutting uh, animation module and evolutionary leap are our uh, uh, main deck spells that are good against control. They help us grind longer games, but I don't think that that's what we really want to be doing in this matchup. After board, it looks like we might need to be doing that. Um, but we're going to try it without that, and we're just going to trim the bobble since we're bringing in zeros, and one hanging back walker since it's kind of bad in multiples in this matchup. Yeah. So uh, traditionally, against regular affinity with dredge, I've turned into a more controlling deck after sideboard, because 
not only do you have creature removal that you want to bring in, all of your answers to hate cards are naturalized effects, and those cards end up being just na obviously good against uh, an artifact-heavy deck. Yep. So we have a ton of cards to bring in, a ton of removal, and Dredge actually grinds a long game very well because the creatures it plays recur, and then you have Lone Conflagrate going along. Uh, so you can play a long game pretty well. So that's what I'm going to try here is, uh, like I normally do against regular Affinity. So I've got two claims, a grudge, I've got a dark blast, and then two axe and two trophy. So we've got five answers to hate cards, which is a, a very healthy number. And then lightning axe serves as an additional enabler, so it lets me trim on Shriekhorn. Dark blast lets me trim two dredgers when I would normally only want to trim one. Uh, I'm actually opting to cut one loam and one conflagrate. Because I don't think Conflagrate is great in this matchup. It's very good against regular Affinity because they have a, a ton of small creatures and you just uh, sweep the, the battlefield that with Conflagrate pretty easily. But in this matchup, like they have several big creatures and Conflagrate's less good against th that kind of strategy, the go tall strategy instead of the go wide. Yep. You know, if, if And if Todd ends up having a draw where he breaks a Hangerback Walker with Arcbound Ravager, if he's not going all in on the Ravager and he's instead using it to make a ton of Thopters, he's probably doing it on his end step and then pumping them with uh, with something. Yeah, and Sorcery Speed doesn't help. With yeah. That, so. yeah, Sorcery Speed is also awkward. So I'm actually aiming to trim a Conflagrate, cutting all my chills because I'm aiming to play a long game and we're bringing in a ton of removal and I don't, uh, don't want to cut into the core of the deck. Yeah. And... Uh, normally, I would cut a number of Shriekhorns equal to the number of axes I'm bringing in, but I actually like Shriekhorn a lot against Torment Script and that kind of effect. Yes. So I want to leave as many in as I can. So I'm only trimming one. Okay. No, I, I like that. Makes sense. Um, my my initial thought was maybe like cutting another Shriekhorn and the other uh, uh, Golgari Thug for the the Loma Conflagrate. But yeah, what you're saying makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Conflagrate's really good if I am presenting you with a lot of small creatures or one very medium-sized creature. Yeah. Like, against your Tarmogoyf, against your whatever. Like, something that you can kill with a one-shot or a bunch of small things you can kill. And this deck doesn't really do either of those. If, if I find that I'm, I'm wrong about Conflagrate or want to have Loom Conflagrate more than I expected in the post-board games, then those are the two cards I, I would cut instead. The second Thug and a second Shriek Horn. Sure. Uh, All right, Nicholas. What we got? Uh, I just write one down here. Timido wants to know, what do you think about the two versions of Shadow right now in the meta, and which one is better, the Grixis versus the Traverse builds? Honestly, I haven't seen a lot of the Grixis builds. I've seen quite a few of the Traverse uh, Team or Battle Rage versions. Um, I think I saw, like, one... Maybe it was just Ben Freeman like a while back where he was talking about just like maybe playing Team or Battle Rage in the Grixis versions again. And I just don't think that that's as good because you are trying to play like a little more controlly role with uh, the Summer Denials and things like that. Um, I think that's where the strength of Grixis lies. And if you're going to play Battle Rage, you should just be playing the find your eight, you know, have your four Traverse and four uh, Death Shadows to, to combo with the Battle Rage. I, I like both Death Shadow versions right now. I don't have a lot of experience with them, but I'm always partial to the one that has Stubborn Denial just to help it against a wide variety of linear decks. Sure. Well, the Traverse one still runs like three oh, yeah, copies it's, of it's Stubborn Denial because that's basically the only blue card in the deck. But Yeah, it's like Jun Splash well, Stubborn I mean, Denial. Well, when you say Grixis, like... Well, like, yeah, one has Traverse, one yeah. is just straight Grixis with Snapcaster Mage and that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, I'll, I'll take the Traverse one then if it's Splashing Blue for Stubborn Denial. Yeah, I always think of Traverse and associate it with Jun because that was the first version, but yeah, they they have become a million colors. Yeah, I mean they, they occasionally splash white for soul lingering souls and occasionally splash blue for stubborn and some either some combination of those. You know. Ross, can dredge function without faithless looting? Or is it just in the deck? No, it cannot. Faithless well, that's looting what they're saying. <laughs> like if they ban faithless looting, would dredge continue to exist? No. Yeah. Okay. Not even remotely close. Yeah, I mean... The, that, that, that would be true even if Golgari Grave Troll were legal. I actually agree with that. That's actually pretty interesting. I, You know, they actually had a, a chance to to kill Dredge off by just banning looting, like, when they banned Troll. And they chose to ban Troll instead to just weaken the deck as opposed to killing the deck. And they just don't, they just never learn. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's never it's never the Bloodbraid Elf. It's the Deathbride Shaman. Yep. Come on! The enablers are always the problem. You can always find more. I mean, that's the, that's the logic they use to ban Ponder and Purity. So I get it, right? But like, come on! <laughs> See, the, come on. The thing with Ponder and Purity is that it was just enabling with too many different combo decks. But Watsi does name, hate Storm. Name the third. Mm -hmm. There was Storm. There was Infect. Oh. 
that the mono blue infect deck? Okay, well, A, they already banned Blazing Soul 2, yeah, so that's sure. a really stupid argument. And also, Splinter Twin's gone. And also, all of the rituals are gone, except the ones that currently exist. So, like, just give me my butter and fruit deck. I mean, it would probably go in Adnods, right? Yeah. Oh, the, no, the, not making that deck uh, a I little mean, slightly they, better. They banned Blazing Soul at the same time that they banned the Cantrips, and that's not true. No, they did, did they do it before? They, I, well, I don't know. It's I been right so after, long. Okay, I so think, old. So, and as far as I recall, the, the, the way it happened was they banned Cloud Post, Blazing Shoal, Wild Nacatl, something like that. And then I played Splinter Twin uh, for like a while, and then a couple months later they banned Ponder Pure Day. Mm -hmm. They're like, these are the problems. Nacatl Punishing Fire got banned after the Cantrips. They got banned in December. Okay, sure. Whatever, dude. All right, my hand's great. I'm on the play. My hand's unkeepable. Had two right. Narc and zero red cards. Hit me. All right, we also have, is Modern still a turn four format? No. And does Watson <laughs> need to intervene to make it that again? Also, no. One, it, the the idea there are of too it being... many like Teferi decks for me to be like it's you know if Teferi if the format really was you're dead by turn four Teferi wouldn't see play. Yeah. I I think people are misunderstanding the notion of a of what turn a turn four format means. And even Watson has said this that, like it doesn't mean that it should be impossible for you to win the game before turn four. It should mean it means that it should be rare and. You can quibble about if it's too common or not and, and where to, to draw that line, but you don't die on turn three in modern very often. That's true. I mean, well, I, I say that, and then I'm playing Hardened Skills Affinity, and the last time I played in a tournament, I literally killed my opponent on turn three three times in five matches. So... <laughs> I, I think the idea that it's there, but like the decks that can do the kill you on turn two and three, those decks are not killing you on turn two and three if your opponent has one piece of, like, the right interaction. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, Infect kills you on turn two if it has the Glisten Rail triple pump spell thing, but, like, you lose if they have a bolt, you know? Or a blocker. So, like, there's a lot of, like, theoretical kill you on turn twos and threes if your opponent has nothing. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Now, I think Infect for a while was fairly egregious when it came to breaking the, the turn four rule, even though the turn four rule is yeah. bull crap. It, it's... It's mostly about turn four being like when you can generally expect to be dead without interacting against an average hand. And like decks like humans kill on turn four, yeah. and that's pretty reasonable. I don't think they can kill on turn three, even with the best possible draw, but like Dredge can kill you turn three. I don't do it very often. Almost never. Uh, this six is pretty good, though. Okay. Maybe I'll kill you on turn three. Ooh, nice. And yeah, that's a card I want to keep on top. All right, start with hardened skills. So, your turn. Uh, Jim. Mm. <laughs> uh, <sighs> do I want to start on the gemstone mine and risk it dying a turn earlier? It is. Better against a cage to do that. Yeah, I think that's fine. I'm I'm gonna looting off of the gemstone mine. Okay. And discard Loma Milk. Pass okay. the turn. Alright, we are gonna stirring so look for one of our hate cards. Okay. Found one. I will play Ning Moth and just go ahead and play it. Just keep his amalgam from entering the battlefield. Your turn. Also, if he doesn't have a way to kill it, he's not going to just keep dredging alone. So Dredge alone. That means that he has a way to kill it. That sucks. Um, make a mana of some kind. Let's play a Shriekhorn. Oh, man, this could get awkward. So I do have the way to kill the Nature's Claim, and I've been trying to uh, wait until the last possible moment, but here I can play my land first and blow up the Claim, but then I don't get to recur a Blood Gas to get the Amalgam back. But if I uh, if I don't play the land first and hit an Archimiba, then I lose an Archimiba. I think that situation is significantly worse, and they're both equally likely, so I'll play the land first. 
Really wish I had a fetch land here. That would have been ideal. So I'll go to 18. Let's nature's claim this cage. Bring Todd to 24. Mm -hmm. And then... Yeah, I'm going to Shriekhorn myself now in case Todd have, finds another Cryptor cage. Yeah. Wait, if you hit an Archimiba. <laughs> yeah, so if I knew I was hitting Bloodgast, I could have held the land, played it, put this trigger on the stack, and responded to the trigger. You cast this this turn. Mm. Well, so yeah, so I play Shriekhorn. I don't play the land first. All right, but oh, you put the trigger on the... Oh, I yeah, see, I see. Yeah, I mill, and then I go mm, put the trigger on the stack, hold priority, okay, kill the cage. So I mean, it's literally just a guessing game because it's 50-50. Yeah. Yep. So. But I think losing the Narcomoeba entirely as opposed to leaving it like this if yeah. uh, I brick is a much worse outcome. Sure. So that this uh, this was the... Okay. So now I do not... Oh, I do have a dredger and it's imp. So uh, a lot of people know to Shriekhorn on their upkeep and, and it's often right to do so, but you want to... If you already know what you're dredging, say like you definitely want to dredge a loam or want to dredge a dark blast, or you have an imp and you just know that that's the maximum you can get, it's better to dredge first. Because then if I hit Narcomoeba without an amalgam, I can activate the Shriekhorn with the Narcomoeba trigger on the stack, yep. hit amalgams in the next two, and they'll come back. So that's what I'll try to do here. Uh, yeah, hit Narcomoeba, hold priority, Shriekhorn myself. I mean, you don't need to do that. Uh, you're just already getting the blood gas back. Oh yeah, if I, I do have the blood gas. So, that, so in this situation, it, it's irrelevant. But if I like only had the amalgam, you could say, well, it'll, the amalgam will just come in on Todd's end step. But again, if he finds another hate card, it could get awkward. So we've got that. Now I have two blood gas. I have this conflagrate that doesn't do a whole lot. Time I killed two creatures. <laughs> Pretty good. Um. <laughs> How do I want to play this? There's, I've got... I can definitely take some interesting lines. Um, should I can... I should never let Ross play Dredge versus... <laughs> He just, he's a time thief. I can kill that. So <laughs> I, I can kill the Hangerback Walker and then deal with the tokens themselves and leave Todd without a whole lot to... Uh... You lose your land, so you need another land. Yeah, I have another land in my hand. We're good on there. Well, you... That this is happening, so we can just do this. I'll go to sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah, I oh, shocked, shocked last turn. Yeah, mm. <clears throat> didn't announce it. Two shocks. I, I wrote it down. Mm. Mm. What about you, Gus? Did you get it? Yes. Dang it! <laughs> oh, I, I can't actually do that because I need to discard a card to the axe. Okay, okay, so that is not a thing I can do. So, what do I want to right do right now? Ross's little rope is burning down on Arena. <laughs> So if that's the case, I think what I want to do is protect against a Ravager next turn with Ink Moth, and that means holding up the axe. I guess I have blockers, but just loan back. Yeah, I'm just going to set up for the next few turns and and loan back some lands. Okay. So the three in the graveyard, and I'll pass the turn. All right. And this comes in. Um, yeah, both Narcomoebas entered on my turn, so. Okay, Todd once again with a significant army here of arbitrary creatures. This might be a tough battlefield for me to attack through. Hmm. This makes my control plan awkward because I kind of want to just start taking natural draws to find removal spells. But Hangerback Walker is so good against removal spells. Mm hmm. I just want to draw a Ravager. So let me draw a Ravager deck. So let me do it. So I think what I'm going to do is start trying to set up a big conflagrate and start dredging loam. So let's do that. Uh, Shriekhorn myself. Um, I had some dredgers. I could flash back a looting here and just try to go even wider. That might be the best. That sounds reasonable to me. I have no comment because <laughs> I'm empty handed and my deck plays at sorcery speed. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to flash back the looting actually. Uh, okay. I'm going to lose. The, choose to lose the land so I can bring back blood gas immediately. Not entirely sure if that's right, but that's what I'm doing. Dredge five. 
Uh, four. Dark Blast is an interesting draw, but I don't have a black source in hand. I have a fetch land, but if I hit the crypt, then that's awkward. Yeah. Also, like, what am I? What am I dark blasting? Yeah, I don't. You're I don't not going know. in on Ink Moth anytime soon. So I'm just gonna peel Ravager and kill you. <laughs> I got blockers. Ah, uh, sure, fine. Ooh, Ancient Guards is a good one. Okay. Uh, I got to discard two cards. I got plenty of lands. Normally, I like to discard lands so I can loan them back if I'm low on them. But yeah, plenty. Yeah, I got plenty here. So why don't we just discard some imps and play a Copperline Gorge and. I can attack with the two Narcomoebas, I think. I am empty-handed, but I do have a Horizon Canopy, so I might. And yeah, I, mean, I guess you saw Actually, your Lava Axe, right? I guess I can, before I play land, I can just attack with the Blood Gas, too. Okay. Um, block, Blood Gas, and... Hmm. All right, I'm going to block both blood guests. Do you want to attack with this too, then, if you're doing that? Or do you not want to just no. set yourself up to get attacked for a bunch? Yeah, I think I need to leave back some blockers because right, your uh, board is pretty threatening, actually. I'll block two blood guests, and then before damage, I'm going to activate this. So you take one from the, the 23. That 23. This resolve? Yeah. Okay, uh, so damage happens. This, I'm going to target this. Yeah, so that brings up three counters onto that, makes the worker a 5-5. Five five. Yeah. And you take two, go to 21. And I will pass the turn. Okay. Tap. Draw. Ooh, that was a good draw. Well, it's a good draw, but you still want to crack your canopy. Well, it's because I can cast it no matter what I do. So, I right, play this. Um. Huh. I don't think I can beat a Ravager at this point just because Todd's going to make way too many tokens. Mm -hmm. So I think what I need to do is actually just try to keep Todd's board down and just leave him with the two hanger backs while I attack in the air. So I'm going to respond by grudging the Arcbound Worker. Go. This is a weird game. My control plan has not really worked out particularly well. But we're going to start Pretty sure I can't win unless I draw a Ravager very soon. I guess I should have attacked for eight, huh? Ah, eh, I'm gonna attack for eight. I'm gonna block. Yeah, same. That's why it doesn't do anything. Uh, dredge five. Okay. Okay, so no more lootings yet, which means. I am going to Lightning Axe the Spellskite and attack you for six. Block one, take four, I'm at 17. Yep. And no more. Oh, we did, we did hit another Amalgam, so that's good. Now I can loan back three more lands. Um, this one, this one, and this one. And play. Do I have a fetchable land left in my deck? Don't know if that's relevant with only the one blood gas. So if I had two blood gas in my yard, I could return one. Get uh, the amalgams are going to be tapped anyway. Sorry. Um. So let's just play this land tapped. Return the blood gas and get some amalgams. Yep. Give me at sixteen. I have you at uh, sixteen. I'm yeah. at seventeen. Pass. Attack for eight. I go to eight. No reach in Todd's deck, go. so I don't have to be super worried. Um, but this is definitely a... I just want to point out, I started with a turn one scales and a turn two cage, and I'm just getting run over. I think I'm going to dredge an imp this turn to start getting some more creatures. Yeah. 
Okay, well there's a looting, but now I have to be a little wary of the cards left in my deck. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. And you're 17, Todd. I know, but I only have three blockers. Um, and you can't really attack with everything, so I'm just going to start throwing two eight power creatures at you every turn. Yeah. That's, that's Walking the Ballista is kind of some reach as well. Yeah, it's not that good without a Ravager, though. I mean, obviously, if I draw one next turn, I can clean out some Narcomoebas as blocks. So he has to probably not attack with these. I mean, he might just not have enough good attacks. That's also, I guess that's great for me. I think it, how many, you've already gone through, or you haven't actually conflagrated at all. I think maybe you just yeah. go for like an, two big conflagrates, but I could be wrong. And Ross, you boarded chills out, correct? Correct. Okay. All right. I will activate Flight Moth. That's summoning sick, correct? No, this one's summoning sick. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's... Right. I guess I should do this. So, activate this. Sure. I guess it doesn't matter. Activate this. Yep. Declare blocks. Yep. Uh, these. This. Well, I don't know. Let's go. Get a negative one counter on this thing with this, and then. I guess I'll do two counters on this. This here, this here, and this one here. And then I'll put this. Okay. So blood gas down, amalgam down. Yeah. You take two, brings you to 15. Yep. And... I guess that actually leaves me with not enough things to kill you with a ballista next turn by cleaning these up. I think I need to take two more from a blood gas and just... Put your blood gas back. Sure. Sorry. All right. I just activated, blocked, bumped it. So that's going to bring you to 13. Sorry, I moved that. Okay. Now I'm going to flash back a faithless looting. Okay. Dredge a loam. Dredge another loam. And discard. Wooded Foothills Mountain. Play a mountain, return two blood gas. That triggers the other amalgams. And I will cast a Golgari Thug. Okay. Go to my end step, get three amalgams, pass the turn. Right. So we're now set up next turn to be able to loam, loam, conflagrate right. after playing a land. Ballista, please. Ballista or Ravager here, and I so think I survive. We're going to be able to conflagrate for eight next turn. Okay, true router. Nice. You're making me not enjoy my job right now, Ross. Yep. I guess so. I can make twenty, <laughs> twenty-ish things. So I, I think I just say go. Yeah, I think I might just be dead to that Ravager. Yeah, I think so. Go. Ballista was lethal too because I killed. I get an extra counter. I killed three Narcomoebas attack with two eight eights, which is why I don't need. I should not block with two lands last turn. Uh, how do I? So, yeah, I'm at eight. So I have to force some blocks this turn. So I have to win the game this turn. Yes, I agree with that. <laughs> so if you have a loam in hand, you can go loam, loam, conflagrate. With a land drop. Two loans in hand, right? Yeah. But I can I can only conflagrate you to five, and then you just make 20 blockers. Like, and if you draw a land, can you go... See, how many cards do you have in hand right now? Four. So you drop to five, loan down to four, up to seven, uh, loan down to six, up to nine, land eight. So you can hit me for eight down to five. Is that what you said? Yeah. That is exactly what you said. I'm an idiot. Okay, never mind. <laughs> And that means, so even if I say like attack with every ground creature, then you only have to sack one hangerback walker, and you get to block eight there. Why would I not just sack one? Or I'm sacking one during combat. And I'm sacking the other yeah. the turn, and then I'm gonna have a ravager big enough or enough tokens to kill you next turn. Yeah, I'm just dead. 
Okay. No, there's nothing I can do. Great. Like my complicate doesn't do anything. Do you not have I'm a dead next turn. in hand? No, I, I used it. Did you? Oh, okay. Well, I don't really want to. I love Axe's spell skate. I wish you'd beat me that game. <laughs> Maybe this control plan isn't good. I mean, like Hangerback is is good against it, and you drew two of them. Yeah, that's true. That that was like the, the real problem. I mean, you had me on a a one turn clock to draw either Ballista or Ravager, so yeah, I drew one. Granted, of those. you you had other turns before that to draw them, that, and they would have been great yeah, at free draws with stirrings and yeah, you had plenty of time. All right, let's get a question or two while we shuffle off for game three. Uh, they want to know, Ross, do you think uh, keeping ley lines in, in the mirror is good? They've been watching and seeing a lot of moto grinders who play dredge free up those sideboard slots so they don't have to bring eight cards in in the dredge mirror. I mean, I I can't imagine not bringing it in. It's just a card that forces them to, to have something. Yeah. I guess like it, is the idea that like it, if everybody's going to try to bring in ley lines and removal for ley lines, you just don't bring in the ley lines and have a better deck for yeah, when... Being more streamlined, basically. Yeah. Well, then in that scenario, why don't you just bring in neither? Well, because they, they're they going to have ley lines. Yeah, but they just might not have it. <laughs> you you, you got to bring in... I mean, if they, that's just the same logic. Like, if No, <laughs> no, it's not. Because it, the 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 them having the answer to ley line while you don't have ley line is fine. You not having the answer while they have ley line is devastating. Mm, so doesn't that mean you should just have ley line in your deck? Because then if you draw it and they don't have the answer for it, it's devastating. Yeah, that's why it seems strange to me. Right. But if they're gonna have the like people, everybody knows you have ley lines. They mulligan to the answers. But if they're gonna so if they're gonna mulligan to them aggressively to answers to hate or, or their own ley lines, then you get to keep like just more six and sevens and be better off in those gimped games. And uh, that was one thing the uh, Caleb Shear, Peter Tuberjan, Build of Dredge, and Dallas, they kind of really enjoyed about their deck was that they could cast their mana base with all the rainbow lands allowed them to cast all their just average and bad creatures in the mirror, which like turned out to be like a real thing in, in the yeah. matches they I mean, played. I, I've added a third rainbow land. The thing is that, that mana bit like losing fetches as has so many detriments elsewhere that I can't imagine it's right. I think if you really wanted to cast your things in the mirror and that was very important to you, you could just play Steam Vents. Alright, let's play um, a fast uh, game. <laughs> okay. We, we, are, we are running behind. Mr. Talkie over here. <laughs> just talk. talk and him. is not talk, very good. Talk, talk, The The one landers where the land is gemstone mine are... A little oh, rough. Yeah. yeah. Did you have a Faithless Looting? No, I had a Shriek one. And was there any thought to bring in Leyline against the Hardened Scales deck to turn off oh, the modular and all that. that kind of stuff? Yeah. yeah, there was thought about that, but it, I'm already bringing in too many cards. Like you just don't have room for them. I mean, I, I do think that like uh, a Marty Pyromancer deck or something could bring it in just to turn off uh, Ravager and Hangerback Walker. Like I think that yeah. that's more than reasonable. But Agreed. as far as Ross's deck is concerned, like you know, uh, he could have brought it in right there if he had it. Obviously, against the the Hangerback Walker, uh, the Ravager would not have done anything. So. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I could have just drawn Walking Ballistas instead and Ravager. Like, you know, I don't know. It's and like a, it's, it's good in tandem with a few cards in your deck, but it's not. Question from uh, one violator for Todd. Thoughts on engineered explosives or pithing needle in the sideboard of hardened scales? I've had good success with scales and the explosives are an extra silver bullet like Ballista in the humans and spirits matchup. Uh, do you have things other than Moxable that produce other colors? Because I feel like if you don't draw Opal, Explosives on one is not that good because you want to, like, play your Hardened Skills and you want to you wanna be Explosive too. Um, I mean, I don't think that Explosives is bad in many decks, sideboards. Uh, I will say that normally whatever number you want to Explosives on, you need your deck to not have permanents of that, or not very many permits at all of that number. Gotta cut down on the collateral damage. Right, like the uh, the old Bant Eldrazi decks used to play main deck explosives, but they were trying to explosives for two, or in matchups where it was necessary, there was sometimes explosives for one, yeah. and they would pretty gladly trade their like Noble Hierarch or whatever, um, but I don't think this deck can gladly trade a hardened skills, you know. I think they were referring to a blue-green build of the deck. Okay, well, so. then I don't know what you're talking about. So I haven't seen that word. Yeah. Uh, I agree, Variant Stout. Nick Miller is great and needs <laughs> to commentate more. 
Yeah, dude. Uh, when me and you did commentary <laughs> at uh, was it Dallas? Yeah. Yeah, the one match you did uh, with the Infect deck, like obviously you are an Infect aficionado, so that helped a bunch. But you're also just generally knowledgeable about magic, especially modern. Now that we cover modern, ninety percent of our tournaments. Yeah, modern, great. All Speaking right, so I just want to point out uh, while we've been talking, to having this great conversation, uh, Ross Merriman is down to just seven cards. He's down to seven cards. It's back to seven cards. No, he's down to seven cards. What? How many? Okay, keep. <laughs> What is going I just on? Draw, I just have it drawn a functional hand. All right. Well, uh, you know, that's just the curse of dread. <laughs> yeah. So go to three. <laughs> 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 I've seen dredge one on three before. Yeah. This so was, I'm just going to, you know. I saw this so much in Dallas where <laughs> everyone was just mulliganing and like it was before everyone realized how broken the dredge deck was that week and they're just like their opponent sitting there and they're, they're like, like, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I, I feel bad. You're going down to oh, four and sorry. then they're just their four card hand just annihilates them yeah. through a hate card and it's like, yeah, you can't feel bad for them. They're signing up if for you this. you mulligan to two, I'll let you draw a freebie. How about that? <laughs> I, get, I get a second mulligan to three? Yeah. I'll give, huh. you, I'll, I'll give you a second mulligan to four. How about that? Uh, All right. Wish I had kept my seven. <laughs> keep on going down. This isn't a this isn't vet, vintage dredge where you get to just keep mold bizarre. Oh no, no, you don't get to scry. You get to mold into four twice. <laughs> no, I'm just You're on the boy. Let's go. Makes you feel any better? I don't currently have uh, a hate card, but I have turn of the hardened skills for the third game in a row. Oh, we got there. Turn two, turn two cathartic. We're doing it. I think I, I think you generally just have to go for things like, it, especially in this matchup where Todd could just. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> we're doing it. You're at seventeen. Yep. <laughs> Dredge at Dakmore yeah. salvage. Honestly, maybe you just don't, because it's not that explosive, but maybe you do. Because next turn you just can't. I mean, if you just hit uh, Stinkweed Imp, you just get to go nutso. Actually, nutso, but so. I, I think I wait a turn, actually. I think what? I wait exactly a turn because, next, like, I'm not going to get the Blood Gas back anyway. So I can draw a Dredger next, I mean, turn, get next turn. Or, worst case scenario, I can dredge back the Salvage, play land, and get mm, back the Blood Gas immediately. So I think fair. waiting one turn makes sense. All right, so I'll go to 19. Put you in 19. Whatever. Don't, I don't need to cut your deck. I trust you. I mean, kind of. <laughs> All right, well, we drew a gooder. I'm going to play this one. I, too, have drawn a gooder. No! So I, now... Uh, people are going to make fun of me so bad if I lose to a mold of four. But honestly... I, th I think I keep the salvage in hand because I want to have the blood gas in case I hit an amalgam. We'll just hope to hit a dredger off the four. I like that. I like that. Plus, you just need that third land just in case. Or you want to play that third land this turn anyway. Yeah. Not the best. Oh, no. We should oh just... my god. Oh. oh, it's so close. Oh, no, you forgot. Sorry, you, you can forgot. go. <laughs> no, you forgot. I would have ordered sequencing. Ooh, that was a pretty good, pretty good draw. Shoot it. <laughs> Where are you well, going? We'll be back in 10 just, minutes. <laughs> just go ahead and cue up the Harlem Globetrotters music now. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's do uh, two questions real quick, and then we're going to take a short break. Uh, back with the banning or unbanning things. Great. Uh, awesome. Snow Love Jiggles it. wants to know, could Modern handle a Dark Depths unbanning? No. We play... Okay. So the we did an entire, like... Two months, once a week, we would play No Banless Modern while we were preparing for season, the Season 1 Invitational at SCG Con. Okay? We, we played a lot of No Banless Modern. We did. Dark Depths was the best deck by a lot. No, Eldrazi was the best deck. We just didn't play it a lot because we yeah. knew it was absurd. Yeah. If you but, look at the results of the No Banless yeah. Open as well, it was just nothing but Eldrazi and Depths decks. Yeah. That's Depths true. was the next best thing after yeah. Eldrazi. It okay. Was, like, they were the two best things by a country mile. Well, the blue decks were not good. I will say yeah. this. I have a hard time beating a 2020. I will say this. The Dark Depths deck, I still think, was the best deck. Just because I think it had uh, fewer people playing it. Yeah. And, and still had a, you a know, pretty the high format got explored more. People would come up with ways to beat the Eldrazi decks. That they're yeah. a little... It's not fun, though. Yeah. 
It's main deck ceremony it, rejection. It, 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 <laughs> yeah, it, it could be that, it could be that the depths decks end up being better in that format, but they were very obviously excellent. Dark Depths is a messed up Magic card. One of the reasons it's held in check in Legacy is because Wasteland is a card. And but, you, but Ross, can't you play Ghost Quarter? Yeah, Field of Ruin and Ghost Quarter are not enough. So let's yeah, Dark Depths is in the bottom five cards on the on the ban list for Modern that I would seek to unban. I uh, I have I have explored this ban list quite a few times, and a part of me wished at some point wished that they would unban Dark Depths just because I want to play Dark Depths Doctor, the old yeah. extended deck that I used to play. Uh, and then uh, the first time we we played a single game with the Golgari deck with, that played Despian Sage and Dark Depths, I thought, well, nope, that's never happening. Yeah, <laughs> that is never happening. The, the bottom five cards that you should just never think that we should unban, never talk about it. Golgari just, Grape just, Troll. It's <laughs> it's the list is Ivugan, Dark Depths, <laughs> Mental Misstep, Treasure Cruise, and Dig Through Time. Just stop. Just okay. don't don't let us have them. They're gone. That's fine. Actually, I you know. You did not name a single card that I thought, man, that should come back. Yeah. You know, you could talk about your Stoneforge Mystics. You could talk about your Green Sun Zeniths. Fine. Artifact Have... Lands, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, Dream not... Tells might actually be too good in this deck, though. Yeah, that is that is true. <laughs> yeah. Not even the regular All right, one more, decks. one more. Yeah. Uh, that, was, that was an old p Sully rant when him and Cedric went over the bannable or unbannable cards. And it's just like some of the cards are just laughably, you can't bring them back. Some cards that are like scary for the format, but you can at least try them. Whereas the cards I just ruin the format immediately, yeah. you just can't even give any credence to to those coming away. A um, lot of questions about speculations from the master set impacting player attendance, no prices. No, we don't. Pass. We're not going to touch any of that kind pass. of that kind of hard that stuff. Pass. Do, not only is that not something I would want to talk about, it's not something I can talk about because I just have no idea. This is not something I concern myself with or think about at all. I like they should give me the cards that I can play tournaments, and then I try to win tournaments with them. That's what I do. <laughs> and then talk uh, to me about commander or speculating on cards that are in a master set. I have no clue. Might as well ask me to read Greek. Question for: Can we ask a standard well, question? Can Jeskai compete with the mono white and the red aggro decks? No, it can. <laughs> <laughs> Go read my article at StarCityGames.com right now. We're going to take a ten minute break. That's almost the perfect amount of time to read my article. It's about uh, three thousand words. You know, you know. I guess that's actually that pretty ten cool. minutes is pretty fast. That's like a twenty to thirty minute read. Look, we can't all be me. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for watching uh, Verse Live. We'll be right back after this short break while we prepare the second round of Agent Stirrings versus Faith of Sluting. <laughs> 